And joining us today in our book talk segment, great to welcome a man who's written, well, it could be a controversial book, we'll find out about it. It's called Eat Bacon, Don't Jog, Get Strong, Get Lean, and I'll just say no BS. <laughs> We're joined today by Grant Peterson on the telephone, and uh, Grant, good to talk with you. How are you today? Hey, thanks, Doug. Thanks for having me on. I, I guess you could say it could be controversial. That'll probably help your book sales, right? You're, you're saying uh, eat, eat bacon and don't jog. I like, the, I like that sentiment. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, yeah, I guess it could be controversial. I mean, you know, the book fills in the details, but the cover really tells the story, yeah. I like bacon, but I, I just kind of started up jogging. Am I, am I doing it wrong? <laughs> <laughs> You're still jogging, you said? I started it up. I, 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 oh, I you started of, it out up? of shape yeah, a little bit, yeah. so I figured I'd better start jogging. So I'm doing it yeah, wrong. Then you, are, then you are doing it wrong. Well, yeah, I'll stop jogging then. <laughs> now, uh, things will be better. You know, the thing about bacon and the thing about not jogging is that, I mean, most people are concerned about their health and their fat, you know, so their inner health and their uh, their outward appearance. And and how they feel. And the thing that makes you fat is not bacon. It's not fat in the food. Excess fat on your body is bad. Fat in your arteries is bad. But fat on your plate, in your mouth, and in your stomach is not bad. And it's not bad because the thing that makes you fat, that drives fat into your arteries and out your body is insulin. And that comes from high blood sugar. And high blood sugar comes from eating too many carbohydrates. So carbohydrates make you fat. Fat does not. Yeah, you go back and you talk about it in the book. We were kind of, you know, kind of joking at the beginning, but it, it does have a kind of a, a serious, uh, at least scientific side to it. Uh, you look at, uh, you know, people two, three hundred years ago, all they really had to eat, uh, you know, whatever they caught uh, hunting was mostly meat, maybe a little grain, but there wasn't much carbohydrates and, and they were okay, right? So they ate mostly meat and a lot of fat on meat. Yeah, and they didn't have, you know, the, the rates of diabetes were a lot lower, the rates of heart disease were a lot lower, and there's a notion that carbohydrates are essential and that you've got to eat, you know, high fiber and you have to have a wide variety of fruits and vegetables and all that kind of stuff, and it sounds, fruits and vegetables sound uh, sound good if you're, com or they're good if you compare them to candy and pure junk food, but any food should be looked at, should be viewed in terms of its effect on your insulin and your blood sugar. That that comes down to carbohydrates. You talk in the book about uh, drink a fatty breakfast. Well, they always say breakfast is the most important meal as far as your energy goes, but uh, adding a little fat to that uh, is probably not too bad for you, right? Yeah, you know, I mean, one thing that's really popular, this guy named Dave Asprey wrote a book called The bulletproof executive or something, and he's popularized this idea of bulletproof coffee, which is this coffee, or it could be tea, with butter, ghee, coconut oil in it. So the idea is that you start your day with calories, that, but not calories that uh, spike your uh, blood sugar and insulin, and it keeps you full that way, and, um, you know, it's a good way. So the the goal, if you want to lose weight and to get healthy, is really to minimize your insulin load in your blood, and you do that by cutting way back on carbohydrates, and I mean way back. I think, you know, 75 to 85% of your calories should come from fat, good fats, but a lot of fats are good, including bacon. Yeah, there are, like I said, people think all fat is bad, but uh, there are good fats. You, you look at the... You know, people that live in the cold weather climates, uh, again, uh, you know, they eat a lot of meat up there, and, and the fat is good for them, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, fat, fat is bad on your body and in your arteries. As I've said, but, uh, in your diet, it's good. It's, uh, it's good because it does you no harm, and it fills you up. Yeah. And not to say uh, exercise is totally out. You have a lot of exercises in the book. Uh, uh, talk a little bit about uh, the exercise you have that, that may be better than maybe what people are doing. Okay, well, you know, uh, most people exercise if they go out, if they leave the house for the purpose of getting exercise as opposed to, you know, riding their bike to get to a job or something like that. But if they go out for contrived exercise, they do it... Uh, for the purpose of burning up calories. Um, maybe one of your listeners says, well, I do it because I just love it so much. And I'd say if you love it so much, you know, you could probably do it, be doing it right now. But, or, or, or triple your amount of exercise. But I would say that most people do it to burn calories, and that is based on the whole myth that losing weight is a matter of burning up more calories than you take in. And if you cannot 
do cardiovascular exercise on a high sugar diet without building up an appetite. So the uh, strategy of losing weight by cutting calories and exercising more doesn't work. And the whole message of the book of Eat Bacon, Don't Jog is that if you, you will lose weight if you substitute good fats for carbohydrates. And then if you want to exercise, if you want to exercise productively, you do really intense exercise for, you know, two to five, six minutes a day, several days a week. But it has to be intense, the gaspy, muscle-burning exercise that you may not even have time to work up a sweat, but it doesn't take all day either, and you don't have to wash your clothes after it. Yeah, yeah you said the, the burst exercises, you, you run maybe sprints or something, rather than just jogging for 10 miles, the, the short yeah. exercises are better for you overall, right? Sprints, burpees, also called squat thrusts, uh, uh, lifting heavy things, things that make your muscles burn, yeah, much better. And you also have a lot of recipes in the back of the book, uh, different things you can eat. Uh, I've never heard of uh, Japanese soup, that's an interesting one. What is that? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I have a pretty tolerant palate, and I'm not a fastidious cook or recipe maker, but I do a lot of my own cooking. I have, I'm have i 60 years old, and I've cooked a lot of my own food uh, since I was 14. Yes, I am married. I've got a family, and my wife cooks also, but I'm comfortable in the kitchen, and I'm comfortable experimenting with stuff. So the japanese soup, it just... Uh, I've spent a lot of time in Japan, and I know what Japanese food is. So this is sort of Japanesey without being a specific Japanese meal. Just uh, beef broth or bouillon, some sort of bouillon or stock with uh, a couple of different kinds of seaweed in there, and either salmon, salmon or clams, or some kind of seafood in there, and uh, some pepper and a little bit of spices, and then you have you boil it all up. Wait until you make it hot and then eat it, and that is Japanese enough. Yeah. But all of the recipes in there are low-carb recipes that don't drive up your blood sugar and your insulin, so they don't cause fat storage. Right. Well, I know uh, people out there that uh, are maybe doing it, the long exercises. They're going to uh, enjoy reading this. It's called Eat Bacon and Don't Jog. We've been talking with uh, Grant Peterson today. And uh, Grant, uh, I know uh, it just came out doing quite well, but do you have a website you want to direct people to? Uh, yeah, my, my main website is uh, rivbike.com. That's R-I-V-B-I-K-E.com. And, you know, the book is available there. But then I have a blog on uh, at eatbacondontjog.com. But, you know, if you, want to, if you want to get the book and read more about it, you can just get it at local bookstores, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, or even Urban Outfitters. Urban Outfitters has a bunch of them. So, uh, yeah, you check it out. Just pick it up in the store, read it, leaf through it. If it makes sense to you, and it does make sense, and it will work, then give it a try. But the key thing is to cut back on carbohydrates, cut way back. Don't eat grains, don't eat, don't drink juice, don't, I mean, cut way back on fruit, starchy vegetables, eat mostly meat, fatty meats, and leaves, and you're good to go. Grant, pleasure to talk to you. Good luck with uh, the book. Hopefully we can talk to you again, and uh, thanks for joining us today. Hey, thanks, Doug. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, Please go to DougMilesMedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at DougMilesMedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or DougMilesMedia.com.